I'm Julie Blanner from the Lifestyle website, julieblanner.com, where I share effortless entertaining ideas, home decor that blends function and design, and easy recipes. Today, I'm joining friends to share what we'd do different in our kitchen if we could do it all over again. Sarah at She Holds Dearly. Chloe at Boxwood Avenue. Lisa, a farmhouse on Boone. And Cammie of Tidbits. Don't forget to click subscribe because I would love to see you again soon. If this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you take some time to enjoy my playlist and learn all about a simple lifestyle. At the end of the video, you'll find not only the playlist to visit my friends and see what they would do different for their kitchen renovations, but you'll also learn about the thing that I am so incredibly thankful I did decide to do. Stay tuned. When you're planning a kitchen renovation, there are so many decisions to be made. It can be really overwhelming. So when we were preparing to renovate our kitchen, I crowdsourced. I did what any good woman would do. I asked friends and family and followers on Instagram what you couldn't live without in your kitchen and what you wish you did differently. So you can learn from our mistakes today and hopefully this will make your kitchen renovation plans so much easier. And if not, you can have a good laugh at all the mistakes I made. Now the first and foremost thing that I wish I would have done different and I just didn't really consider or think about at the time, my cabinet maker highly recommended that for aesthetic purposes, that I only do three drawers next to our dishwasher rather than four. I thought, no problem, we can make that work. I'll just pare down and declutter. It's my favorite thing to do anyways. Well, it ended up being a little troublesome. I have since organized that space, but it would be so much easier if I had a double drawer inside rather than a single drawer. Having those two layers, even though it has only one drawer front, is a discreet way to get beautiful design that blends function. When you open up the drawer, there would be a thinner drawer for those smaller items and then the larger bulky items on bottom. So I wish I would have done that different and it's on our to-do list. Eventually we'll get to it. But if you've seen how long my to-do list is, you know why it has taken us almost three years now. So that's my first and foremost thing I wish I would have considered. I highly recommend you consider drawer pullouts for all of your cabinets, but also your drawers. They can add so much function and additional space, especially in a small kitchen. Now this one might surprise you, but the second thing that I wish I would have done different in our kitchen is I wish we would have waited and caulked in the winter. Our kitchen was wrapping up in about May of, I think it was like 2018 now? I think it must have been 2018. Our kitchen was wrapping up and I didn't think about it at the time. Everything looked so clean, pristine, and perfect. But now each winter, we have a lot of cracks where the crown molding meets the ceiling. And I've learned after I paid to have it done a second time that even with the best of caulks, you're much better off when you have extreme temperatures like we do here in Missouri to caulk in the winter because it will be at its smallest point and it can always expand with it as it needs to. So that's my second biggest regret. Now given that I never had the opportunity to design a kitchen from scratch before, I really leaned on those we hired. 
And this is not their fault at all. It's just a personal preference. And I think there's a little code involved there too. But one of the things I really wanted was for our microwave to be really discreet and hidden away. And our cabinet maker insisted that it go in the island up front and really easily accessible and just built into the island. Well, two problems with that. First of all, I use my microwave pretty much to melt butter. We never really reheat anything. We always make exactly what we need to consume. And I don't know, I've just never loved leftovers and I don't like how they taint the smell in my kitchen fridge. But second, there's really nothing that I need to do in the microwave that I can't do in the stove top. I don't know why, it's just always been my go-to. I rarely use the microwave. So even with children, that's just the case. I mean, once in every year, twice a year maybe, they pop popcorn there when they have friends over rather than me doing it on the stove top. But it rarely gets used. So I wish we would have, you know, gone with our gut and put that in a cabinet where it's not seen. Because for some reason when I'm sitting in the breakfast room and I stare over and see the stainless steel appliance there, it's just like a thorn in my side. It's one of those small things, it's totally not a big deal, but for me, for some reason, it is. All of our other appliances, aside from our wine fridge, our cabinet front and our wine fridge and our microwave are stainless. That brings me to the fourth thing in our kitchen that I wish we would have done differently. I wish we would have selected a panel-ready wine fridge. I got scared at the last minute and changed my plan because I was reading all these reviews and it seemed that those that were panel ready, which were very limited in options at the time, were noisier. And given that it's right next to our living room where we spend a lot of our time, I don't know, I don't love the background noise. So I opted for one that's quieter, but it's stainless. And I think eventually we might take that one down to our lake cottage and replace it with one that is panel ready. I don't know, I'm sure it seems so silly to others, but that's something I wish I would have done differently because it's so peaceful to have all of our other appliances, including our refrigerator, panel ready, um, so they look really built in and you hardly realize that they're there. Now the fifth thing I wish we would have done differently is our kitchen island. I gave in on this one. And it's one of those things where at the time I was tired of living without our kitchen. We had one hiccup after another with our cabinet maker and I just said, all right, fine, I give. Our kitchen island was supposed to be white oak. I absolutely love white oak. I love the way it naturally weathers when it's unfinished or with just a little bit of protection like Modern Masters dead flat or flat out flat or even a wax. I just think it's just so graceful and beautiful and I love wood in all its natural beauty. Well, I realized I love white oak, which I had selected. Now, when our kitchen island arrived, unfortunately, he made it in red alder. I think he had so many kitchens going at the time, he got it confused with someone else's kitchen and he also said, well, that's just what I always use. Well, I'm really picky and I didn't like the red undertones in the wood, but I understood as a small business owner that was a significant expense for him that he would be out if he had to remake the entire island, especially since our island is six feet by four feet. So I decided to give in on this one and we stained it. I think we went through over 30 stain samples to see how it would look with red alder with these particular stain colors and of course everything red red we ended up settling on one it's never been my favorite but it's not awful it's totally tolerable but the problem is is that stain and modern masters dead flat do not mix because they're oil-based and water-based we knew that that was a risk but at the same time i wanted to tone down the redness and the color so we decided to go for it it's something that no one would ever notice if they were in our kitchen, but it drives me insane. It's just like one of those little things, I think especially since you spend so much money on your kitchen that it's always, again, been a thorn in my side. But it's just because it was a labor of love and I've learned to love it. I can live with it, it's totally fine. Life goes on, whether it's white oak or red alder.
Now finally, this is one that I'm still not sure if it's a regret or not. I can't decide and I wouldn't know unless we did it differently. And that is not making our island bigger. You know, we toyed around forever with the size of our island. And I love hanging out there and it's where everybody gravitates to when we're hosting friends. It's where the kids love to hang out, they eat their breakfast in the morning. It's really become a focal point, not only in our kitchen, but in our home. Given that, it would be really nice if all five of us could sit there. It's not necessary, it's not required, but gosh, some days it would be nice. And we do have the space. But the problem that we faced is that our kitchen is in an older home. I believe our home was built in 79. So we have a lot of existing walls to deal with. We have a nice wide opening where the breakfast nook is, and we have been able to expand the opening between the living room and the kitchen, although only an additional three feet. So we have, I believe, like five and a half feet there now. Well, we also have the mudroom. So you, as you can imagine, it kind of creates a little triangle. And I didn't want to put anything in the middle of that triangle because those are natural walking paths through our home. I do kind of wish that we would have gone a few extra feet every now and then so that more people could gather around the kitchen island. And I think it would make our kitchen feel less disconnected where the bar and the refrigerator are versus where the rest of the kitchen is. However, again, it's one of those things, it's not that big of a deal, but it's definitely something to consider as you're renovating your kitchen. Now, before you click subscribe and visit my friends following the playlist in the description below, I'll tell you a few things I'm really happy I chose to do in our kitchen. First of all, I'm really happy that I chose unlacquered brass. It automatically adds a layer of warmth to our kitchen. So it feels timeless and it was really inexpensive. I'll link to this in the description below, but I'm really happy that I chose unlacquered brass. Next, I'm totally, totally, absolutely in love with our marble. I'm so glad that not only did I decide to go with marble again, despite everyone saying that I should go with quartz, I am also happy that I splurged and went with the Olympia marble. It is a whiter marble, it has less veining in it. And you can read all about that in the description below. And I'm really happy with that decision, even though it costs double what the marble did in our previous kitchen. Finally, I bet you're going to think that my favorite decision in our kitchen was our range, but it's actually the color we painted our kitchen. And if you watched my paint colors video, you'll know paint color makes such a big difference of how a room feels. And in our kitchen, we are north facing, so it reads really blue, especially in the winter. So this color wouldn't work for everyone, but I actually had our cabinets painted in the same color as our range. And that is my absolute favorite decision I made because winter, spring, summer, fall, it feels warm and welcoming. And so that is my very favorite decision that I made. And it was one that I really struggled with because I had to get it just right. I couldn't paint these cabinets twice. And fortunately, I feel like I nailed it. Let me know what your biggest kitchen regret is in the description below. I would absolutely love to hear. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and click on the playlist below to see my friend's biggest regrets.